Good morning. Thank you for being with us. The question is, will we be buying cars powered by gas in the future or will there be an EV mandate? If you rent your home or apartment, is there help coming your way with new laws? Will your local restaurant be paying the full minimum wage to their servers? A lot going on at the state legislature. Joining us with updates on these and other proposals is Dan Harz, columnist and senior editor at CT Insider. We're going to start by saying this might get a little crazy. We are going to try to cover a million topics. I've got a million things written on my pad. We're going to try to get through them all. So let's go fast. See if I remember the lines. Well, let's, I, I started out behind the eight ball. I forgot to wear my green tie today. <laughs> so well, listen, I got the green you on got for the both green of us. Tie. You've got the information. Let's start with Piece EVs. Of green right there. All right, there you go. EVs and environment. Tell us about that. Electric vehicle, the so-called mandate, which the pro-electric vehicle people fight that it's not a mandate, whatever you call it, the end of new car, elect, uh, gasoline-powered cars by 2035 is dead. That's not going to happen. Part of the reason for that was the national sort of pushback on that, which slowed progress. So what they're looking to get is a council formed, and that's likely to pass, which is going to create information, answer, question. Connecticut's got to be ready for this. That's the bottom line. The gasoline industry is not going to be able to fight this forever. The change is coming. The council is the stopgap to sort of make that happen. And there's a big omnibus environment bill? Environment bill is doing everything. The biggest things are incentives for more clean energy in the form of heat pumps for houses and businesses, in the form of lots more solar, in the form of uh, energy efficiency for both businesses and residences, and also accountability for what agencies are doing in the thresholds. You know, we have these targets by 2040, by 2050. These targets are not enforceable. They're going to be enforceable under this bill. Let's talk money in the state budget. Uh, nonprofits, schools, colleges all want more of it. Are they going to get it? Not all of it. Uh, probably the nonprofit service providers are the most put upon, uh, as we've discussed here. And the new uh, wage increase for some state employees, including some of the people who do some of the work they do as well, is giving them an added push. The colleges are going to be a split the difference like we've talked about. Uh, and then other money issues include the car tax. Well, tell us about that. What's the latest? Uh, short answer is nothing's going to happen. I personally think it's a good tax. I think it's a fair tax. If I drive an old beat-up car, which I do, I don't pay as much tax. Why should I pay more for my house? Other people think because some cities pay more, cities pay more than you know, richer towns, it's an unfair tax. We're not going to get an answer, not because of justice. We're not going to get an answer because we don't have a billion dollars to replace the car tax. And the governor wants people who work remotely for New York companies to sue New York. Yes, that's the border war. <laughs> that broke on the morning of the, the new session. The governor is giving a 50% incentive if you, if you work from home in Connecticut for a New York-based company, and let's say you go in twice a week. Right now, New York is taxing you for your full salary. Connecticut doesn't like this, right? And we think we can win lawsuits if individual people sue the state. If you take your case to the state and win under federal law or state laws, you get half the benefit Connecticut gets all the tax, and you get half that benefit. So it's border wars with us, we the commuters. I'm not one, but as, as the soldiers. All right, let's really fly. Uh, blood alcohol being lowered to 0 0.05. A lot of people are saying, the Republicans especially, the problem is not the 05 to 07 drivers. It's the really drunk drivers, and that this isn't addressing the real problem. So I, I, that has come up many times. I don't think it's going to pass, but that's the, the, the rap on that is, not, is, is also you get some people that are right at 05 that are not drunk drunk, but it, 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 should you have two tiers, not a, not a full DUI. Some kind of infraction but, ticket. Right, a lesser tier. I, I wouldn't bet on it. Housing's a big one, renters' rights, a lot of other stuff with housing. Talk about that. This is emerging, as, uh, as my, my colleague uh, Alex Putterman and other people have, have said, this is really emerging as the biggest issue of the session. Housing, it, the big problem is there isn't enough housing, right, to get some band-aids on that problem. You've got the so-called just cause eviction law that says you cannot be, your lease must be renewed at the end of your lease period unless you've done something wrong. Good luck adjudicating that. The other one is landlords will not be allowed to look at your criminal record, certain criminal records. That's an easier one to enforce. And then a cap or some type of rent increase cap. Very tough to create and enforce. Other states have done it. New York, of course, has uh, famously a big system in place. Very controversial, all three of those things. Talk about data centers. There's going to be a study? We think there's a study. The industry doesn't want to study because right now they have the, the green light, 
right? So they're trying to stop the study. One of the big issues is that they can use diesel power under the executive order. They can use diesel power at will. Um, the biggest, the mother of all data centers would be down in Waterford, tapping right into the nuclear power plant. That would use 300 megawatts of power, and the issue is there, can we afford to give up that 300 megawatts for the jobs that are coming? And it's a big bill. I think you mentioned this when you were talking money, but minimum wage, servers, and strike pay. Talk about those. Um, <laughs> <laughs> strike pay is surprisingly resilient. You would think, oh, there'd be great opposition. This is if strikers are on strike for two weeks or longer, they would get unemployment benefits. And you think, oh, that's crazy. That's a no-brainer. Turns out it actually has a public policy benefit, which is it lessens the length of strikes and the likelihood of strikes. And the governor indicated last week a softening on that. He may be willing to talk about it. He's been against it. The other one, the, the, the servers, that's a union-backed bill. It's not clear that servers and restaurants actually want it because they think they're going to get less tips. It's a big national debate. All right, we got like a minute left and we got 10 more to go. Let's do it. Junk fees. That was rolled out today. That's a federal issue. The state can, can really only affect it on the edges, and that's what Lamont is trying to do. School lunches. School lunch. Free lunch for everybody. It's probably not going to be fully funded, but this year was only a little piece. There will be a little more piece. Cannabis. Seltzer is being sold probably illegally, but they're going to tighten that law up in all stores. They're going to say liquor stores can sell cannabis seltzer. They're also going to bring in the hemp uh, growers to be part of the CBD industry, uh, part of the THC industry. And then you have the bills that, and this is why I love you, you These termed <laughs> in the email to me the crazy stuff that would be... I don't know, I don't know if I said stuff. <laughs> you may not have said stuff. I'm terming it on television crazy stuff. Yes. Psychedelic mushrooms, legalizing fireworks, and banning legacy admissions. All crazy stuff. You can't ban legacy admissions at private colleges like Trinity, Wesleyan, and Yale. You can say you're going to do it, but you can't get into the room where they're letting people in. That's crazy stuff. The fireworks is a little bit less crazy because that's, you know, many states have sort of loosened the rules. I don't see the reason to do it. Personally, if people want to blow things up, they can figure out a way to do it on their own. And then the psilocybin would be for therapy only. The danger is that really people shouldn't be driving on that stuff. And I don't think we have a disciplined enough populace to be buying hallucinogenic mushrooms. All right. We got just a couple of seconds left. Any big surprise you can predict? Uh, yeah, I think it's going to, it's starting out with a whole bunch of things happening, and I think it's going to turn out to be a more productive session. Perhaps if one or two of these housing things pass and one or two of the labor things, it could be a session with some surprises with things getting passed that we didn't think so. I've said all along here, things aren't going to pass, they aren't going to pass. If some, some of these things pass, all of a sudden it becomes a productive session. Well, and it's a short session because they all have to run for re-election, and when they run for re-election, those are two big talkers on the campaign trail, things like tenants' rights, and you, you could definitely see some variation, so it could be interesting. Yeah, there's more upside for Republicans, but the trend is against Republicans in, in terms of the vote, because they, they just don't have the base with Trump. It's, with Trump on the, on the ticket here, that's going to hurt the Republicans. So. That's it. We did it. We got through the whole list. Dan Haar, CT Insider. He'll be back with more updates. Thanks for being with us. We did us. it.